Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Your Company Health podcast. We're excited for you to join us today. Today, we have a special guest, uh, Dr. Joel Wussel of Healthspan by Design. Hey, doctor, how are you? I'm doing well, Andre. How are you? Good, good, good that you could join us today. Uh, I, I want you to, to, to start by just, just tell us about your, your business and uh, and who do you serve? Sure. Um, so I created Health Spam by Design. Um, let's see, we started here in December of this last year. About to launch the website here in about a week, so very exciting. And about to actually start seeing patients in Southern Florida in about a month. Um, so I am an emergency medicine physician by trade or by training. And uh, I just realized that there was a need for someone who can help guide preventative care. Um, we have this huge disparity in our society where people are burdened with chronic disease and they feel as though that's just part of the aging process. And uh, my goal is to educate people to let them know that that's not necessarily the case. You know, people can go through life without chronic disease, without having heart disease, without having diabetes, high blood pressure, but it, it takes a uh, proactive approach. And um, what HealthSpan by Design does is help create a platform and a blueprint for patients so that they are able to be take charge of their own health. And uh, by doing that, what we do is just like, if you think about things that you really care about, um, you don't overlook them, right? You are constantly make, you know, gauging the temperature to making sure things are functioning properly like a vehicle. Um, so the same thing with your health. And in traditional conventional medicine, right now, you know, an annual 30 minute checkup with some blood work is the standard of care, especially as you're younger, and you're quote unquote, not burdened with chronic disease. But as you get older, chronic disease starts to develop and then requires much more time uh, in the doctor's office and hospital. So my goal is to, so if you are, you know, hopefully, or if you are fortunate enough that you're not burdened with chronic disease yet, I want to keep you there. And if you do have it, I want to reverse that process for you. So by doing that, what we do, we're very aggressive and looking underneath the hood. And by doing that, I am um, having my patients do blood work with biomarkers on a quarterly basis. And I pair that with genetic testing so I can create a custom plan for each individual patient. You know, I uh, stay up to date with the current literature and studies, which is great. So we can look at the masses, but that's all great, but everybody's biochemistry is unique and individual. Everybody's genetics is unique and individual. So by looking at your blood work with biomarkers paired with genetic testing, I can create a very tight customized blueprint for each patient. And with quarterly blood work, we can take our interventions, which are, I, prim I primarily focus on lifestyle intervention and we optimize lifestyle intervention making sure you've got great sleep, you're exercising appropriately, you're eating clean, a good balance of food so that you're not in, you know, in a caloric surplus, Make, making sure that you're getting good muscle mass, which is vital for optimal health, making sure that you are have outlets for good emotional health, uh, meditation, journaling. Um, all of these pillars of lifestyle optimization are key. And then paired with that, then I do other things like supplementation based off of your genetic deficiencies and your blood work deficiencies, hormone optimization, peptide therapy, all these things get incorporated in, but I'm not someone that, I'm not a pill pusher. I don't wanna just give you meds and drugs and claim that you're gonna get healthier. I push the fact that you need to maximize your lifestyle choices if you want to be as healthy as possible and you want to improve what we call your health span, which is your quality of life. So I can't emphasize that enough. And my goal is to empower the patient so that they have the education so they know how disease progresses and what we can do to prevent it. And that's fan fantastic, doctor. I, I like the whole proactive approach, but we're going to dive into it a little bit more, but I want to set the backdrop a little bit about you. 
So just tell us a story. How did you get in healthcare? Oh, wow. So I've always been a little bit of a, a science nerd. I've done, I did science fair projects ever since I was in kindergarten. So I've always had that curious scientific mind. Um, and I, um, my dad, I'm the first medical doctor in my family. My dad was a botanist. So um, I think maybe just being around him and he showed me scientific method and how to do experiments. I've always had a curious mind in that regard. Um, and then I went to college, didn't really know what I wanted to do, but I've always been a very healthy person. I've always been into to exercise. I've exercised almost on a daily basis since I was 10 years old and I'm 41 years old now. And it's, it's like the air that we breathe. Exercising is there. It's a non-negotiable for me. Exercise every single day, doing something. So um, I've always wanted to take, I've always just been a healthy person. I think part of it just kind of stems from it just one, it makes me feel good uh, and engaged. And then I have a very strong family history of some health issues. My grandfather had a heart attack at age 38, uh, which very, very young. He was at the time the youngest, I'm sorry, the oldest living heart transplant recipient um, at age 70. And this was, you know, 25 years ago. Um, so I, I've always been conscious about that. And I, I mean, paired with that, and then my love for science, I, I got into medicine. For, I actually did pharmaceutical sales first before I went to medical school, because I did business in addition to biochemistry uh, for my undergrad. But then I decided I wanted to go to medical school. Um which I did. And then, so I, I went to college, University of Arizona Medical School, Jefferson Medical College in Philadelphia. And I did my residency in emergency medicine at New York Presbyterian Hospital, Cornell and Columbia. Um, but always had, you know, the passion for science, the passion for wanting to help people, to educate, always been very health conscious. Uh, emergency medicine has been a great path for me so far. You know, I've been you know, kind of, a, I've always had this adrenaline junkie type of mentality. And I like the idea of being a jack of all trades and, and knowing a little bit about everything and being able to apply that in the real world, um, doing lots of fun procedures and high pressure situations. I, that's just something that I've always gravitated towards. Um, but as far as this new approach, what, uh, what I call longevity medicine, and how it differs from conventional medicine is I've just been frustrated, you know, with the, the way that the healthcare system is and the patient population that we're treating and it not to a fault to the patient. I mean, in some regard, because patients don't take responsibility for their own health, but I feel like our system has put that mentality in the heads of our patient population. Just, just take this pill and then we can manage this or and that's 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 uh, what I was 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 about to get at uh you know I like the idea of your proactive care the things that you're doing to to keep your patients accountable to get the the best possible outcome but the way society is set up is that you know uh you, there's a pill for everything right there's a pill for this there's a pill for that it's more of a reactive nature where you can get things taken care of after the fact but uh, but but for what for what what you're doing, it's it's really uh, uh, something that takes uh, as a you know as a person, it takes a lot of discipline to you know to say visit you every quarter and uh, and keep on, on on top of our, our health goals because uh, naturally you know we all just go to the doctor and do an annual physical and then that's that. So. Um, so that's great that you're doing it. And I want you to walk through, say a new patient just come to you and say, doctor, you're going to uh, take care of, you, you're going to guide me through this process. Uh, you know, how do you start? Talk to us about your process. Sure. I think, um, I mean, you bring up a good point, Andre, and I, I have a very specific patient population. And um, first off, you need to be looking at someone who has motivation to want to do this because not everyone is at this stage and um, people want to have, have an aggressive approach and they want to take charge of their own health. 
And I think people that understand that the one finite resource that we have in this world is time. And if you are not taking charge of your health, you are going to age quickly. And in terms of your quality of life, that's going to be diminished. And if you know that if you invest in your health, just like you invest in your retirement fund, if you do that in the forefront, you're going to reap benefits in the back end. So you're, if you are taking charge of your health early, you are shrinking that period of morbidity. That's the name of the game is we want to decrease the amount of time where you have a low quality of life. We have not done a great job of that in conventional medicine. We've increased lifespan just a little bit, but as far as that period of time, like between the ages of 65 and 80, when most around the age when most people pass away, we don't do a good job of preserving that quality of life. It really drops off. But if I told you that if you put some time in the forefront and you invest, you actually are buying some time because in your later years of life, we're preserving that quality of life because who cares if you live to be 80, but if you're bed bound and you're rotting away in a nursing home, right? You want to be up and doing the things that you enjoy today. So if you invest now and you're proactive now, you're buying time for the future. So most of my patients buy into this model. Um, and what I... I emphasize with my patients is, yes, there's a lot of work that needs to be done in the forefront, but once you get in the routine, it's just like anything else. It's like anything else that you care about and you don't think about it anymore. So my patients come in, they do a comprehensive questionnaire. It takes around 45 minutes to an hour. That's the only time they have to do that. And that gives me a really good gauge of what's going on with their health. You know, just a standard medical history, um, like you would normally do at a doctor's office, family history, what medication supplements you take. Um, and then also things that are going on in your life, some of your lifestyle habits so that we can see what things may need to be adjusted. And then um, some focus questions on your hormonal health to see if you have some hormonal defic deficiencies that we need to optimize. Because oftentimes, you look at traditional blood work, especially like hormone blood work, like your thyroid, for example, and your, your thyroid markers may be with the normal limits or even optimal. I have a, my, my range for optimal is different than the conventional doctor because I'm holding you to a higher standard. So for what's within normal limits for me is a, probably a, a little bit more stringent than conventional medicine, because if the name of the game is longevity, I need to be looking at your blood work. If you're, let's say you're 50 years old um, and I'm looking at your kidney function, I need your kidney function to be at the, you know, the age of a 35 year old, not a 50 or 60 year old, because once we get, if you want to play the longevity game, we have to hold you to a higher standard. So that's what I'm doing. So we're looking very focused on these organ systems and these biomarkers and holding you to the highest standard possible. Um, so that's part of it. So we're doing blood work. So we do the questionnaire, looking at your hormone levels to gauge to see if you actually have some hormone deficiencies that your blood work's not telling you. And then we can monitor those questionnaires through time with hormone optimization if we need to give that to you to see if you have improvement. So we do the questionnaire. We do blood work with biomarkers on a quarterly basis. I assess over 70 different biomarkers that look at various things like... Uh, your lipid and your your lipid and cardiovascular profile, your uh, insulin resistance um, or insulin, um, the the uh, other markers that may potentially lead to insulin resistance, your metabolism, your kidney function, your electrolytes, liver function, vitamins, micronutrients, inflammatory market um, uh, markers, sex hormone, thyroid function. Um, Th those are just to name a few, but so very comprehensive list of blood work with biomarkers that we look at. And the beauty of that is looking at it at a quarterly basis, I can see with my interventions, our interventions together to see how you're progressing. And then, so everyone does the blood work on a quarterly basis. They do a one-time genetic test. They get all that done right away. And then 
the genetic testing looks for your genetic, some of your genetic deficiencies. So um, we're looking at things called these genetic SNPs, which are called gen uh, genetic single nucleotide polymorphisms. Everybody has these, these little genetic variants for each particular gene that codes for a particular protein that codes for a certain thing. So um, knowing what genetic variants you have and deficiencies you, you have gives me a, a customized individual blueprint for you. So to give you one example, because a lot of people may not understand what we're talking about, but for me, for example, I was vegan for five years. And I did that because from the research that I did, which is not the best, food research is not the best because there's a lot of confounding variables that, that don't give you the best results. You can't necessarily prove causation for a lot of these food studies because there are a lot of other variables that are involved that could, can skew your results. So I did veganism because of my family history of heart disease. I had a high cholesterol. I had high blood pressure. And this was despite exercising regularly, being ideal body fat, good muscle mass. I'm like, why is this happening? I thought, well, maybe veganism is the answer because there are studies that show that eating meat leads to heart disease and all these other things. So I did that. And sure enough, my, my markers improved. Um, my cholesterol improved tremendously, but... Um, it wasn't until I did some more research and I did some genetic testing, uh, genetic testing, and I kind of connected the dots, and I realized it had nothing to do with plants versus animal products. It was the actual micronutrient itself. It was the fact that I am very sensitive to saturated fats. Mm. Okay, and a you know an, an animal based diet you know, if you're, especially if you're eating a lot of protein can have a lot of saturated fat. If you eat a lot of red meat, it's going to have a lot of saturated fat, especially if you're not eating lean meat. So that was what was actually causing my cholesterol to be elevated. Mm -hmm. And I realized through my genetic testing that I don't sat, I don't tolerate saturated fats very well. I have genetic variants that make it so that my cholesterol is raised because I don't tolerate saturated fats. So you, for example, Andre, you could eat all the saturated fats you want. If I smell bacon, my my cholesterol goes through the roof. So <laughs> knowing that and fixing that variable, now I'm back to eating a much more uh, balanced diet where I'm able to eat a lot more foods, but I'm very conscious about my saturated fats and I'm able to get the same results that I want to see. And it has nothing to do with being plant-based or just animal-based. So that's just one one example with, with um, the genetic testing. So we do that once we create um, a blueprint off that. Uh, we also do, everybody gets a food sensitivity test mm -hmm. that looks to see if they are allergic to certain foods. Um, and then um, everybody gets a DEXA scan, which we do one, uh, one every six months. Each membership is six months long. So you get one for each membership. And a DEXA scan looks at this is a really good baseline marker because it tells me your bone mineral density and you can see if you're at risk for osteoporosis, especially if you're female during, you know, hormonal changes in menopause that drops off a lot because you lose estrogen and it, and it puts you at risk for osteoporosis. So I, I look at your bone mineral density from there. I can see um, the muscle mass and the muscle mass distribution that you have because muscle is very, very important for longevity. We want to optimize that. We want to increase muscle mass. Uh, and then lastly, which is very important, is it looks at how much organ fat you have in addition to the fat that you see, the subcutaneous fat. Organ fat, it, it's called visceral fat, is very important in terms of optimizing your health. Because if you have a lot of fat around your organs, your organs don't function properly. And mm -hmm it leads to things like insulin resistance. If your liver has a lot of fat in it, it's not going to work and it's going to cause insulin, your sugar to be unregulated and cause diabetes and insulin resistance and inflammation throughout the body. So that's something that we look at. I can gauge to say, Hey, Oh, you've got a lot of organ fat. So, um, relative to, I mean, and you can't see this just by the naked eye. Like you could be a thin person 
Mm -hmm. but genetically you're predisposed to having a lot of visceral fat. So that's something good to know. And then through our interventions, we can monitor that and we can do another DEXA scan in six months to see if we're melting away some of that fat. So it's a, it's a window of looking inside your body and we're doing it in real time. Um, a lot of other things we do like continuous glucose monitors to see what your, you know, how your sugar is, uh, your blood sugar is responding to the foods you're eating on a, on a regular basis. And we can monitor, or we can create a diet plan based off of that mix and match foods, take away foods, add foods based off of that. So and that's, um, that's go ahead. No, I'm saying that's, that's, that's awesome. And uh, I think, I think you, the, you have a comprehensive program that I think everyone should want to learn more about because it's, it's really putting yourself in a position as an individual to, to live and sustain a healthy um, lifestyle. So, so, so doctor, I want you to tell us like, what are two or three uh, uh, actionable tips that individuals can do uh, immediately to improve their health? Health. Okay. So, um, so I do, you know, some stuff on social media, and it's interesting because, it, especially in the longevity space, just like anything else, I think it's kind of an oxymoron because um, you have these quote unquote experts that are trying to give you these biohacks <laughs> or these supplements that are going to rejuvenate you and turn back the clock when, you know, in reality, one, we just don't have the data that supports any of these claims. And two, most likely they probably don't do as much as you think they do, but most people are not going to like to hear this, but the things that are they're going to optimize your health are things that require time and effort in its lifestyle. You are going to have the most bang for your buck if you are optimizing your lifestyle choices. And I look at them like this. I, I said, it, said it before, but exercising regularly and making sure that you're building strength, building muscle mass, because muscle is not only just something that gives you strength and looks good, it is an actual organ that produces hormones and it is the body's kitchen sink for sugar. So it wants sugar. So it buffers sugar. So the more muscle that you have, the more wiggle you room you have for what you eat because it requires more energy and then more, the energy in the form of sugar. So that alone, having more muscle mass is going to reduce your risk for insulin resistance and diabetes. So strength training matters, exercising matters, the metabolism, or we call it the metabolomics, which is the, all of the molecules and that, um, that occur when you exercise, if you could take all the molecules that you have when you exercise and bottle them up and set them as a longevity pill, that would be the best thing because exercise is the best medicine. So exercising would be number one, mm -hmm. great quality sleep. So being very vigorous on, on making sure that you're getting good quality sleep, knowing what good quality sleep is for you. And you should just track your sleep with an aura ring or uh, a smartwatch. So good quality sleep because so many factors are involved with your sleep. And then um, another thing would just be making sure that you're eating clean, eating good whole foods, making sure that you're getting plenty of protein. Most people do not get enough protein to optimize their health. The RDA only uh, says that you need 0.7 grams per kilogram which is not that much. We don't use kilograms in the United States, but what you should really be getting is about a gram of protein for ideal, for each pound of ideal body weight. So I weigh around 170 pounds. I get a, at least 170 grams of protein a day. Um, mm -hmm. And that will help to make sure that you are building as much muscle as possible, which we talked about before. It also... Um, Protein is very satiating too. So if you center your meals around protein, you'll ultimately eat less. Yeah. Um, so 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, that's great, great adv advice, doctor. And and uh, th there's a no, there's a misconception, and I'm glad that you you know you you uh, cleared up some of these. But there there's a misconception that oh, you you have to be vegan or you have to be a pescatarian and uh, you have to, you know, have a specific, uh, you know, uh, you know, diet or popular diet. But as you mentioned, you know, all this is based on your genetics, you know, uh, based on those right. testing and, and based on what uh, your genes are like, that's what's going to determine your optimal health, how you live. Your body doesn't know if it's animal flesh or plant product. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with, the molecular compounds within the food itself. And some people are more sensitive to some compounds than others, but um, it just so happens that certain types of foods are rich in some nutrients versus others. So uh, again, with diet, I think diet is a very controversial topic and I'm not gonna go into <laughs> detail on it. But I can tell you just to simplify things, get a lot of protein, mm -hmm. eat whole foods, don't overeat, and avoid excess or added sugar. I think, I think with that, I think you with, paired with exercise, good quality sleep and having some outlet for stress management and mental health, whether it be journaling or meditating, you know, spending time with loved ones. Um, that If you do all of those things, you're, you're going to be in the top 1%. It's easier said than done, but doing those things regularly. Right, right. And we, <laughs> and as we discussed, it's all about motivation and commitment. You know, we can say all these things, but as an individual, you have to, you know, give that effort to to follow what uh, you, the doctor, for example, is prescribing and, and doing and follow follow your your uh, your blueprint for 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 one to be to be healthy. So, doctor, I, I know uh, you're in Miami, but what about telehealth? Do you do do telehealth? So I do do telehealth and um, you probably know this, Andre, but since COVID things have been, oh gosh, it's a mess in the telehealth world because they had all these, they, they minimized regulations for telehealth because of COVID and now everything's starting back up again. So what I am doing is a relatively, I think it's a new concept. So I'm learning as we go, but uh, I'm slowly working my way into other states. I'm starting in Florida uh, just because I'm licensed in Florida. I'm also licensed in Texas and licensed in New York. So each um, each state has their own, uh, their, their different bylaws for telehealth. So from a compliance standpoint, it's easier said than done. But yes, yeah, so if you if you want to get my services for now, it's limited to Florida. Um, very soon I will be moving to Texas cause I have a license there as well as New York. And then hopefully, um, through time, you know, I'm going to be collaborating with other practitioners to extend, um, this whole model to each and every state. Cause I, I think people really need to have access to proactive medical care and, um, especially um, something that's very convenient to them. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm on a mission to make that happen. Yeah, yeah. And I, I'm I'm telling you, I, I really like what you're doing on your program. I think, you know, anyone listening and watching should definitely, you know, uh, you know, reach out to you and 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 get more information because I'm it's it's having living a healthy lifestyle, it's all about being proactive and and being diligent and 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 uh, and, and committed you know, uh, to fall in the process. Um, but doctor, I can't believe we're, we're almost out of time. Uh, I know you mentioned your website, but talk to us though about, yeah, as you know, I'm in the digital marketing realm. Uh, what are the things that you're doing, uh, from a digital marketing perspective to get the, your, the word out there for your practice? Uh, it's a, it's a good question. So I do have a marketing team that I have hired that is doing my social media as well as my marketing, um, since this is all kind of a work in progress, since the business is not, you know, live up and running yet, um, we are experimenting with things. But um, really what we're doing right now is targeting the major cities that I'm practicing in. So Miami and New York, and then uh, making sure that we are... 
Unfortunately, none of the stuff that I am providing is covered by insurance. So mm -hmm. this is going to take a particular customer that that um, you know has the means to invest in their health or they they understand the value um, that's required that that what's covered by insurance just is not enough at least in this stage in the game if you really want to tackle and be proactive about your health because there are no ICD-10 codes which are what physicians bill mm -hmm. for to get reimbursed for their services that are preventative that's not the way our healthcare system is is designed right now. Hopefully in the future it will change. But right, right. right now, if you want preventative care, you want proactive care, you're going to have to seek it out yourself. Um, so for now, everything is cash pay. So uh, we are we are targeting those that that have the ability to um, to, to you know invest in mm -hmm. their health in addition to what insurance provides. Right. And and for what you're doing, I think it's a it's a it's a great investment. You know, a doctor told me once, either you're you you pay now or you pay later. So <laughs> so you know and, and it's always better to to pay now. So as as and as you 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 clearly are articulated, uh if you invest now you have a better quality quality of life and even add more years um um until life. So so I think it's a great a great investment. Our health is our wealth, and uh, and and what you're doing is is uh, is really it's really great. So, doctor, tell us. I know you mentioned you just launched a website. Uh, is it up and running? What's the website address, or how can our, our listeners or or what our viewers uh, reach you? So uh, the website is not up. It should be up next week. I mean, you can go to the website, and it's healthspanbydesign.co. Co. Um, you can uh, go ahead and register and get on the waiting list um, to get more information to become a patient. But the, the formal website should be up in a week. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, I will be starting to see patients in uh, around one month uh, in the Florida area. But if you are interested, you're not in Florida, if you are in New York and Texas, um, I will be available to you guys soon. Uh, just if you're not in any of those states, um, you can still subscribe and get, I'm going to have, um, you know, a mailing list. I'm going to have a blog so that you can potentially have at least access to education. And then hopefully in the future, um, you will be able to work with me. All right. Perfect. Dr. Wusso. Well said, uh, it was a pleasure talking to you today and, uh, uh, talk to you soon. Thank you so much, Andre. Appreciate it. Thank you.